Hello everyone, welcome back to part two of our rotisserie dolly segment. Uh, today I want to show you how this dolly system works with our rotisserie uh, by simple lifting. You can see here, got the uh, spike pulled out of the saddle. It's really only dropping down about an inch. And at that, that lift, very simple to do. Uh, but in relation to our dolly, it's actually all we need. And we're just lifting from there, dropping it right down in the saddle. Uh, real simple to do front and back. So I'll give you the height and measurements on this dolly uh, a little bit later. Let's talk about a little bit what we're going to do this morning. You can see underneath, we're all scraped out. Everything underneath the car, inside the fenders, 100% uh, scraped. Getting ready to do a little sandblasting this morning. Um, this is kind of a big project. We've got a lot of areas to do. So what I'm doing is masking some of those areas so I can do it in kind of a controlled fashion. This is uh, one of my throwaway car covers that I've saved. It's got a few rips and tears in it, so I just save it for this purpose. I'll show you the areas I'm going to shoot this morning. The areas are uh, simple to get through. I want to mask that off, and the reason we're doing it is because when you're doing an open blast, um, you have to recover the sand um, and put it back in the pot. And that's going to be very difficult to do if you're filling the car up with sand. So I'm just doing sections at a time. And it's probably going to take, to do this whole car like I want to get it. Um, may have three or four sessions here, but that's okay as long as it, uh, as long as it turns out nice. And we get all these areas detailed out. And get in here and scrape all this out. Real hard to get it out of there. But if you don't scrape it out first, and this is all dry scraped. Um, if you don't get it out first... And you're going to be shooting sand at it and shooting sand at it shooting sand at it you're just, you're just never going to get there uh, it's really best just to get down to bare metal as quickly as possible best way to do that is just strip the paint off and then sandblast it it's going to go much smoother um, and you're going to get a lot better job take a look at the other side here and there's the other side well hopefully we get both these done this morning and then also i'm going to do the inside of the front fenders that are pulled off. I'll show you those here in a second. Um, and then last weekend, my friend Mike came over and helped me drill out this front area. Up under here, drill and cut that out. That was fun. Um, thanks a lot, Mike. I really appreciate the help. Um, anyways, we got that out of there. I'm gonna do a whole segment uh, on cutting that out and replacing that and what's involved uh, on, a, on a different video. Let's take a look at the blasting area. I'm preparing this area this morning. I like to do everything, uh, this, all the hard lifting, early in the morning before the sun comes up. And it's not windy today. You don't want to really be doing this sort of thing on a windy day. You want a calm, calm day, a cool day. You're going to be running your air compressor really hard. Here's what I'm using. I'm using 80 grit uh, glass bead. And this works best with new, with new bead. If you're recycling this uh, from our blasting tank it's not going to work very well it's too powdery um, it gets really dusty and it seems to plug up this uh, this pot here's a here's the tip you're gonna have to have a few tips hanging around to do this um, go through these tips pretty fast so uh, package of extra tips is good to have but also what I'm doing is I'm recovering this uh, uh, when I run the pot out sweeping it up and then putting it back through the screen strainer and get any bits out of there that might clog that tip um, just recovering it with uh, some brooms and dustpan I've also got a real inexpensive shop vac um, to just suck, suck areas out of the car it's going to fill up any areas that might start filling up and you're going to have to suck that out of there rather than blow it out of there then you can just empty this container it's, a cl it's cleaned out inside so you can just empty this container strain it and put it right back in the pot is our blasting area. Uh, I'll go inside and uh, show you how I've masked off the fenders for blasting because we don't want to hurt anything now that we've got primer surfacer on there. Uh, need, need to get all that prepared properly so we can blast it without hurting it. Okay, go inside and show you that and be right back. Okay, here we are in the shop here. So uh, I've prepared these for blasting also. Try and do this. Uh, same time this morning while I got everything set up. Um, what I've done is underneath I've masked the edges with your typical uh, auto body masking tape. Uh, it's pretty thick and sticks well to the fender and we have plenty of protection uh, against the sand. 
so we don't damage that area. And then uh, I've used some press and seal plastic, uh, cleaned up the fenders real good, put the press and seal on there to cover it up with a plastic uh, sealant, and then taped everything down real good so it's 100% sealed. There's no way sand can penetrate this area um, while I'm working with it. I don't want to damage these fenders. They're kind of heavy and uh, a lot of work in them. You can see it's all scraped out in here also. Uh, but we need to get in there with a sandblaster and tune that up before we start our undercoating process. Um, and then also, these are going to be done on the ground rather than on the horses. Uh, I've got these soft um, throwaway rugs. Mom gave these to me. These are going to work out perfect. I'll lay it down on real soft and cushiony. You can lay it down in there and just uh, concentrate on getting all those tight little areas with that, with that nozzle. So there's the fenders. We're going to get out there, roll that thing back into the port, and get on with it. Okay, we've got it rolled back in here. Um, got our wheels locked down so it's not moving around on us. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to shoot this side first, see how it turns out, and then turn the car around and get out the other side. I don't really want to be locked in this corner trying to do this. It'd be easier just to turn it, which is what's nice of having the dolly. Okay, let me get out these things, get it done, and we'll be right back. Uh, almost forgot. Uh, one last thing, you want to uh, wear a respirator when you do this. I take a, uh, a pre-filter and double it up in there and then completely seal it with tape so nothing can penetrate that area. Uh, definitely want to wear a respirator. A dust mask is not going to be enough protection when you're this close to the, to the sand. Um, a hat to keep it out of your hair, some blasting gloves, and I like to use a, uh, a face shield uh, rather than a hood because with the hood you can't wear the respirator. So with this respirator I'm able to still have plenty of face protection, see what I'm doing, and um, the two work really good together. And then I have a wrench and some spare tips handy because you're going to be covered in sand and you're going to need to get at these right away. <laughs> Once that tip goes out you're going to need to replace it. Okay, let's get on with it and uh, see how it looks. Okay, that's over with. That took about four hours. Got the outer fenders and the inner fenders done. These areas here are really hard to get. Really hard to get. The sand seems to pile up in the bottom. It's hard to see what you're doing. You got sand bouncing around. Your uh, face shield is uh, covered in sand. Really hard to see, especially in the sunlight. I better do this in the shade. Get up in these pockets up in here. I have a little bit of tuning up to do and go back and scrape any little residual bits out of there that you didn't get. So the tough areas were any area where I had any paint left on the car. You see right down in here, a little bit of paint. It's just real stubborn. It just doesn't want to come off. Why well, it's better to strip this stuff off and then go with the sandblaster. You'll be here for the rest of your life blasting it. It's going through incredible amounts of sand. This actually went fairly well. It's uh, cleaned up real nice. It's going to get us uh, going to that next stage we want to get to. So get the epoxy going on these inner jams. See down in there, a little bit dark. Uh, also a little bit of rust pop through right there. You can see it's eaten through a little bit. Structurally, uh, it's pretty sound. I'm going to save it. We're going to fill this area with some uh, metal type filler and uh, tune that up. You catch these areas when you blast everything out. Some areas that are bad will have to be cut away and then others you can probably repair or weld in. Let's go take a look at uh, the blast zone. All right, here's our fenders. Those are unbelievable to do. <laughs> Couldn't see anything, just covered in sand, just raining down sand on me. But we got in there as best we can. And uh, this area right here, this lip, this has also got to be epoxy coated, and then we're going to catch that up with some primer surfacer. Also, this outer jam, this guy here is going to have to be caught up in paint. Even though the inside, 
I want to do uh, a POR 15 on these fenders, but I'm going to have to do uh, the epoxy on the uh, outer edges. You see in there, I uh, patched a, a rust through spot on the, um, the body panel when we did the body work. They turned out pretty good. I'm happy with them. Definitely make these work. This area up in here is just a nightmare. Really hard to get in there, clean all that out. I think we got it pretty good. Definitely make it work. Maybe just a little bit of pitting up in here. We'll tune that up and then uh, get this covered with some epoxy and uh, blend it back in, caught up with everything else. All right, so I'm going to clean this mess up, uh, get this thing back up on a rotisserie, and then we'll take a look at those dolly dimensions. Okay, let's get a closer look at this dolly, see how this works with our rotisserie system. So what I've done is I built this uh, dolly in a two-tier system. First level is at uh, our 12 and a half inches, which I like for final assembly, and then it breaks away right here on the top of that. It's just setting on there and locked in. I'm ending up at about 22 and an eighth. You could be plus or minus a quarter inch on that and should be fine. Uh, for those of you on the metric system, uh, sorry about that. You'll have to do all these uh, inch conversions to centimeters uh, to get your to get your math correct on that. Uh, the 48 inches wide, that's from left to right. And then I just put these metal straps in the corners here and it just sets down on there so I can lift this whole top section off. Just grab this a second. There you go. That just sets on there. And uh, plenty strong, plenty stable to do everything you need to do. And also you can use it as a storage tray while you're working with it. Also you're going to need to put a notch in the, the top of this one also. And a notch down here. And this is for uh, the tunnel running through. This is uh, radius part of the tunnel. Just sets down in there. You can make a little room for that so we're not pressing on it. So I want to show you uh, how simple this is really to move it um, with this system. This is a very, very finely balanced uh, measurement on this car right now. We've set this up with a laser. Um, so those measurements to balance ratio are right on. The car is actually top heavy and a little bit heavier in the rear than it is in the front. So anytime you're doing your lifting, you're gonna to wanna to lift the, the rear section first and then uh, the front section second. I put some reference marks in the saddle area and uh, for some reason, when I'm rotating it, it always wants to walk to the rear a little bit. So I put these marks on here and just keep it centered in there. And the reason we wanna do that is that as we roll this down this back edge of the car, has to swing through uh, this area and we want to make sure we get enough clearance so it's not hitting it. But uh, from here, you know, we can set it on uh, some real versatile jack stands to set any kind of angle you want to set. Um, we can put it on 90 degrees. Let me just set it on 90 degrees here a second and uh, set the phone down. Okay, here we are, 90 degrees. This is how we had it really do all our scraping. Dad and I went at this with some hand scrapers. Between us, you're looking at about 35, almost 40 hours to scrape all this out of here by hand. A lot of work. Not a lot of fun, but uh, doable and uh, has to be done. You really have to do this to, to get your sandblasting to go well. You leave all this on here, you're going to be sandblasting forever. Try and get it off much longer than, than uh, 35 hours and you'll have all the mess that goes with it. Let's take a look inside these fenders. Way back in there. All this is possible to get out of there. We use various hand scrapers, screwdrivers, any kind of tool we could think of that would get in there and get the job done. These tight areas in here, I'm going to use a uh, rust converter. I'm going to shoot that in there first down those it's real hard to get areas because I don't think the sandblaster is going to get in there and get it 100%. It's going to be close, but um, just to be sure we don't have any rust in there, we're going to we're going to soak it with some uh, rust converter and let that let that do its job. It'll convert uh, convert it over, 
and then we'll sandblast afterwards. If we sandblast first and then try to do the conversion afterwards, then the clean bare metal will actually rust back. So kind of a weird science the way all that stuff works, uh, chemistry involved. But um, combination between uh, rust converter and sandblasting will get us uh, exactly what we want out of this before we move on to undercoating the inside here. Okay, so I'm going to show you. I'm going to put this back up now on the uh, on the dolly and just show you uh, how easy it is to rotate it and uh, how important the balance is on this lift. Okay, got the dolly back under the car here. You can see the clearance that we have. I'm going to lift this up here with the one hand while I'm trying to film with the other. And so at level, we're right at about one inch. And uh, when you're not working with the car, you can just put this under here for safety reasons and just let the car rest back down on it. And that'll keep it steady. That way it's not going anywhere. You never know. Uh, you could have an earthquake. You could have uh, hurricane force wind running through here. I don't know where. We have a lot of winds out here in Las Vegas. So anytime you got the car up off the ground, it was a good idea to uh, prop it up with some kind of a safety brace or prop. And these wheels, um, these are 250 pound rated, semi good quality ones. They ran about $20 a piece. I uh, would recommend a good quality wheel. I wouldn't use a steel wheel because when you roll it around, you're going to get a lot of vibration and you really want a little bit of cushion out of that. So a, a semi soft rubber is probably what you want to be using. Um, all with locks and all full rotation on all four wheels. And a corner strap. And then uh, front to back, we're 37 inches, front to back. So there it is. You uh, will be able to move this car around very easily. You'd be surprised how it's just not as heavy as it looks. I'm going to just, uh, just try something here, see if I can. Okay, so i got one hand on the, on the post here. I'm just moving this. You can see the whole car. I'm just barely... I'm barely tugging on it, one hand. So not heavy at all. It's all about balance. When we put the front end in, we want to be as close to the front uh, on this spike as possible. I wouldn't run it too far out. Also, uh, in my early design, I had put these these holes in here. I was thinking that maybe I'd be turning the car uh, from the front and rear of the rotisserie, but actually it turns out uh, the best place to turn this car is just by grabbing grabbing this right here. You can move the whole car. The greatest of ease right here. And then you can and push the dolly out and put your jack stands in there. Or you can uh, just set it to the ground very gently. And one person can do this. I do all this by myself. It's better to have an extra pair of hands around um, if possible. But sometimes when you're working on these projects, uh, you don't have the access to people uh, do it yourself or doesn't have the advantages that the pros do. We don't have the manpower, we don't have the forklifts, we don't have the, the sheer tooling that they have, so we just have to figure out another way to get there. Okay, while we're building things, uh, I'm going to run one more video. Uh, I'm going to take you into the shop and show you some other things that you can build, real simple things to build to manage some of these bulky parts on the car while you're working with it and uh, minimize the space that you have. Thanks for tuning in and we'll see you next time.